we are introduced to Tori and Kyle Breyer as they navigate their journey to conceive a child. Through glimpses of books on their shelves, it becomes evident that they are struggling with infertility. In the midst of their latest attempt, Tori senses vibrations caused by an unidentified crash outside. Initially dismissing it, they become alarmed when a more intense shake causes a power outage. Looking out the window, they witness the aftermath of the crash. The story then fast forwards, presenting video clips showcasing the growth of their son Brandon. Tori engages in a game of hide and seek with a slightly older Brandon. At school, Brandon captures the attention of his teacher by answering a question with confidence. His classmate, Caitlin, takes notice of his display of intelligence. Later that night at their farm, Tori is engrossed in painting while Brandon sleepwalks toward the basement. He discovers a meteor, presumably the same one he arrived on Earth in. Filled with anger, he chants and tries to approach it. Tori intervenes, soothing him and bringing him back to a calm state. The following morning, Brandon takes on the task of mowing the lawn. Frustrated with the mower's starting process, he hurls at a considerable distance. As he approaches the still-spinning blade, he curiously inserts his hand into it, effortlessly stopping it without sustaining any injuries. Later, the family visits a diner with Tori, Kyle, his Aunt Marilee, and his Uncle Noah. When Noah tries to offer Brandon a toy gun, Kyle reprimands him. However, Brandon insists on having the gun. This abrupt demand prompts the family to abruptly leave the diner, leaving a bewildered waitress behind. The next morning, Kyle attempts to communicate with Brandon, but the young boy seems disinterested. Kyle observes that Brandon is casually chewing on a fork without causing any harm to his teeth. In an effort to bond with Brandon, Kyle takes him on a hunting trip. During their excursion, Kyle shares his knowledge of rifles and discusses the changes happening to Brandon's body, prompted by Tori's discovery of lingerie advertisements under his bed. Later that evening, Brandon creeps around Caitlin while a slow rock song plays in the background. She becomes aware that the music is coming from her laptop and promptly shuts it off. However, she grows anxious, sensing that he might be watching her from a nearby window. Suddenly, her mother, who happens to be the earlier mentioned waitress, rushes into the room, concerned about her daughter's distress. Caitlin's breathing becomes rapid and panicked. Meanwhile, back at the farm, Noah and Tori search for Brandon and eventually locate him. The following day, Tori visits Brandon's school and engages in a conversation with his teacher, who notices him engrossed in mysterious drawings in his notebook. Tori inquires about the drawings, but he swiftly closes the notebook and walks away. Back at the farm, Kyle notices Brandon startling some chickens and asks if everything is all right. Brandon assures him that it is, and they both head inside. Later. Tori and Kyle venture outside to find that all the chickens have been ruthlessly killed. Tori suspects a wolf to be the culprit, but Kyle harbors suspicions that Brandon might be responsible, recalling his presence in the area earlier. The subsequent day at school, Brandon and his classmates participate in a trust fall exercise. Caitlin remains apprehensive about the unsettling events from the previous night but refrains from disclosing anything. However, when one of their classmates fails to catch Brandon, he plummets to the ground. Although he is unharmed, Caitlin boldly states that she won't assist him because he is a pervert. Brandon vehemently denies the accusation. The coach intervenes and instructs Caitlin to help him up, but as she extends her hand, Brandon forcefully breaks it, causing her to scream in agony. You? He's a pervert! In the office, Tori apologizes to Caitlin's mother, explaining that it was an accident and that accidents can happen. However, the mother remains doubtful and demands that the sheriff arrest Brandon. Despite the mother's insistence, the sheriff refuses to take action, stating that Brandon will receive special sessions in school instead. During the heated argument, Brandon sits there with a somber expression. The mother accuses Tori of giving birth to a psycho, but Tori defends her son. Eventually, the family leaves, but before they go, Brandon gives the mother a menacing stare. Later that night, 
Brandon overhears Kyle and Tori discussing him. Tori begins researching meteors but is interrupted when she notices something unusual happening in the barn. She hurriedly goes outside to check on Brandon and finds him levitating in the barn. He continues chanting, expressing his desire to take over the world as she approaches him. Suddenly, he falls and cuts his hand on a part of the meteor. Take! Tori rushes to his aid, trying to calm him down and talk him out of his distress. However, he becomes agitated, accusing her of lying to him, and runs off. Tori goes to Kyle and shares what she discovered about the meteor. Filled with anger as he walks along, Brandon screams and emits laser beams from his eyes. Later, he visits Caitlin in her bedroom, while she types on her laptop with her one good hand. He assures her not to be scared and emphasizes how special he is. Caitlin mentions that her mother told her not to talk to him, but he confidently states that he will take care of that situation. Tearfully, she watches as he suddenly leaves, leaving a flower behind for her. Meanwhile, at the diner, Caitlin's mother is closing up when she senses something strange. As she steps outside, she notices diagrams on the windows, reminiscent of what Brandon drew in his book. The lights start flickering and suddenly the windows shatter causing her to get a piece of glass in her eye. She looks around but doesn't see anyone, yet she can sense a presence. Grabbing a baseball bat, she tries to defend herself, but a shadowy figure zooms by at incredible speed. She takes a swing, but doesn't connect with anything. In a panic, she seeks refuge in the back cooler and locks the door. Desperate to escape, she is horrified as Brandon uses his laser vision to burn through the door. He rips it off and stares menacingly at her before attacking presumably leading to her demise. <laughs> the following morning, Brandon reunites with his parents, assuring them that everything has been explained and is under control. Meanwhile, at the diner, a sheriff and his deputy investigate the incident, including the remains of Caitlin's mother's body. The sheriff discovers one of the diagrams on the window, matching the ones drawn by Brandon. Merrily, who is also a counselor, attempts to have a conversation with Brandon to understand what is happening, but he remains unresponsive and unwilling to explain. The session proves fruitless, and Merrily contemplates informing the police about his unsettling behavior. Later at a bar, Kyle discusses the events surrounding Caitlin's hand with his friends, and he starts to suspect that his son may be a monster. Meanwhile at home, Tori experiences flickering lights in the bathroom as she goes about her activities. Later on, Brandon visits Merrily's house and insists on talking to her. He warns her against involving the police, claiming it wouldn't be beneficial for anyone. Merrily tells him to leave, and he appears to comply. However, he secretly stands outside her window, observing her as she texts Noah. He re-enters the house in his costume, but Noah returns and discovers him hiding in the closet. Noah escorts him out and threatens to inform Brandon's parents. As they prepare to leave in Noah's truck, Noah tries to force Brandon into the vehicle. But Brandon retaliates by throwing him against the garage door. Noah gets up and drives away in his truck, terrified that Brandon is pursuing him. Suddenly the truck starts swerving uncontrollably and loses power. Despite Noah's attempts to restart it, Brandon materializes in front of him, causing Noah to scream in horror. Brandon uses his powers to lift the truck off the ground, suspending it in the air before violently crashing it down. In the process, Noah suffers a severe jaw injury, and Brandon approaches him. As Noah lies dying, Brandon draws another one of his symbols on the ground using Noah's blood. Brandon, get the truck! What the fuck?! Returning home, Brandon claims he was playing soccer the entire time. He explains that he was bullied, using it as a justification for his actions, and that's why he lost his shirt. That night, Kyle experiences a nightmare that depicts Tori discovering the baby in the meteor and deciding to adopt him. However, the dream takes a disturbing turn when the baby's eyes suddenly emit laser beams, startling Kyle. The ringing phone wakes Kyle up, 
and he and Tori receive a call informing them that Marilee is at the hospital. They rush there to console her after learning about Noah's death. Marilee reveals that Brandon had visited her before the incident, which raises concerns for Kyle. The following morning, they break the news to Brandon about Noah's passing, but he simply responds with a nonchalant okay. This response leaves Kyle suspicious, and he accuses Brandon of being involved. Tori attempts to calm Kyle down, but his anger escalates. In a fit of rage, Brandon forcefully pushes Kyle into the pantry, causing the doors to break. Tori sends Brandon away. Later on, Kyle discovers Brandon's shirt with a small amount of blood on it. He manages to discreetly take the shirt without Brandon noticing. He apologizes to Brandon for his earlier outburst, but Brandon responds with another indifferent okay. Kyle then shares his findings with Tori, but she refuses to accept what he's suggesting. Meanwhile, the sheriff examines the accident scene and notices similarities between the diagram on the window and the symbols drawn on the ground. That night, Kyle searches through Brandon's old birthday cards and tries to console Tori. The next day, Kyle decides to take Brandon on a hunting trip. Meanwhile, the sheriff pays a visit to Tori to discuss his discoveries in the photographs. Tori chooses not to acknowledge the evidence, but the sheriff assures her that he will return. In the forest, Kyle and Brandon follow deer tracks, with Kyle allowing Brandon to lead the way. Meanwhile, back at the house, Tori discovers Brandon's notebook and is alarmed to find the same diagram from the window and the road, along with drawings of his costume, the injured waitress, and several deceased individuals. The words, take the world, intensify her fear, and she becomes frantic. In the woods, Brandon examines the tracks while Kyle tries to shoot him. To Kyle's astonishment, the bullet ricochets off Brandon's head. Kyle hurriedly reloads, but Brandon suddenly disappears. Panicking, Kyle attempts to flee, but Brandon, now wearing his hood again, swiftly flies around, appearing near him. Finally, Brandon tackles Kyle and compels him to sit up. Kyle tries to apologize, but Brandon mercilessly unleashes his laser vision, piercing through Kyle's skull and killing him. God. Don't hurt me, okay? Brandon, please, please. Back at the house, Tori desperately attempts to call Kyle, but receives no response. Finally, Brandon answers the phone, and Tori inquires about Kyle's whereabouts. Brandon coldly replies, he's gone, and informs Tori that he is on his way home. Ending the call, Brandon starts flying through the house at incredible speed, causing destruction in his wake. Tori dials 911, while Brandon continues his chaotic flight around her. The sheriff and his deputy respond to the truncated 911 call and arrive at the devastated house, witnessing the aftermath of Brandon's rampage. As Tori emerges from the house, the sheriff calls out to her. However, before they can converse, Brandon charges at the sheriff, tearing him apart. Tori and the deputy, overcome with panic, seek refuge inside the house. Tori goes upstairs to hide while the deputy readies her gun, searching for Brandon. She calls for additional backup and cautiously moves through the house. Suddenly, she sees Brandon materialize in front of her, then instantly behind her. The sounds of the deputy being torn apart by Brandon echo throughout the house. prompting Tori to maintain silence. She escapes through a window and lands on the ground below. Seeking refuge, Tori heads to the barn where the meteor is located. Recalling an earlier incident where Brandon was injured, she retrieves a shard from the meteor. Discovering the waitress's lifeless body, Tori conceals the shard and calls out to Brandon. He appears, put it as before, and she professes her unwavering love for him. Tori moves to remove his hood, and Brandon gazes innocently at her. They embrace, but unbeknownst to Brandon, Tori prepares to stab him with a shard. He seizes her hand, though, and pulls the fragment out. He launches her into the air several hundred feet in the air out of anger. He gives her one last glance before holding her out and letting her fall to her demise. The screen goes black as he hovers in midair while a jet approaches from behind.
The following day, the plane's wreckage is visible on the ground, but there are no signs of any survivors. According to reports, Kyle and Tori were inside the farmhouse when the plane collided with it. With a smile on his face, Brandon is munching on a cookie as he sits there. Cities are destroyed, and millions perish at Brandon's hands during the end credits. Thank you for watching this movie recap. I hope it provided you with a clear understanding of the plot. If you enjoyed the video, we would appreciate your feedback. Please show your support by giving it a thumbs up and leaving a comment to share your thoughts. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more engaging movie recaps and exciting content. Your support motivates us to produce more quality videos like this. Thank you once again, and we eagerly anticipate bringing you more recaps in the future.